anyways, next game, uh, this is the Texans and the Bills. Uh, Texans outlasted the Bills 23-20. to 20. Uh, It was one off of a, off of a uh, late field goal. Um, you know, for the most part, look, I think this game could have gotten a lot worse because the Texans were without Nico Collins for a majority of the game. He had a hamstring injury right before halftime that pulled him for the game, and the uh, Texans offense just didn't look like they were able to recover. You would think Tank Dell was going to get a little bit more action. Not so much. Um, run game was okay. Um, Bill's defense is very, very tough. I know that they had, um, they also kept an eye on D- Stefan Diggs and he had some targets, but you know, not nearly as effective. Of course, when you have Nico Collins on the field, just because again, I've said this, he's their number one guy and he's really the, you know, he's really what defensive defensive teams are focusing on is him. And that's how you're getting Stefan Diggs and tank Dell or Dalton Schultz all open. And that's how you're getting those explosive plays. Well, take out Nico Collins and the Texans are still a good team, but you know, you can just tell like they're missing their number one guy. And I imagine this next week coming up, they are going to be in, let's see, they're going to be in, in new England. So it's a pretty stout defensive team. I imagine that they're going to game plan to where they're probably going to have tank Dell be someone that takes on a little bit more of the load or Stefan Diggs. Stefan Diggs, my opinion can easily take on the number one role. Um, so, you know, that's what I think for the Texans. And, you know, again, the Bills have a strong defense. However, it was really let down by the offense because, man, Josh Allen, nine for 30, not a very good stat. Um, and another thing I just want to draw attention to, which I'm more concerned with just because, again, the NFL for the last 10 years has been on player health and safety. And there was a play in the fourth quarter. I think it was like four minutes left to go. Um, You know, Josh Allen rolls out and I think he was trying to get the ball out to one of his receivers and he lets the ball out, but he gets taken down by the defender before he lets the ball out. And he, Josh Allen hits his head on the turf hard. And you can clearly tell that in replay, he is knocked out. He's, he's out. He, you know, he is, He's on the ground. I don't want to say he's lying there motionless, but it, it's not for a while before he actually comes to and he starts moving around. Um, he gets up, goes over to the sideline, very adamant that he does not want to go through concussion protocol and then does go through concussion protocol. He, and then he really misses one offensive snap. And I know that some people are phrasing it by he was out for the next six plays. The next the the next five plays were was a I think it was a field goal on his team which they missed, and then it was um, it was the offensive series for the Texans, and then the Bills get right back out there after a turnover, and really there's only one play that Mitch Trubisky is in there. He does one handoff, and then Josh Allen sprints out of the blue tent, grabs his helmet, and goes out, and. I don't buy that he passed the concussion protocol. I am. And again, I'm not a doctor. I have no idea. So, but I have a hard time believing that you get knocked out on the field, knocked out cold. There's absolutely no doubt. Replay shows that he was out. He hits his head. His arms go completely dead and you see him kind of his body sliding a little bit. And it's not like his hands and his arms continue to brace for him. He's out. He is out cold. And then he get sure he gets up after he's awoken in some form or fashion and then goes to get checked out. And I get like some players are super competitive, such as Josh Allen. You know, you want to be there for your team and all that stuff. But I also just want to point out the optics of how poorly this looks. You the NFL pumps all this money into player and safety healthy. We have a bajillion different helmets to protect the athlete. We can do this. We can let you wear the guardian hat. We blah 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 blah. We have a we have a, a third party, uh, unaffiliated neurologist that will examine your behavior on the field and determine whether or not you are going to continue to play or not. And then, you know, you have another independent person who will determine whether or not you're cleared for action and all this other stuff. They have all these safeguards, so to speak, in play. And yet, clearly, he hits his head on the turf. Drew Code Sports Talk is supported by SeatGeek. 
SeatGeek is your go-to app for tickets, making it super easy to find the best deals. They even rate each ticket deal on a scale of 1 to 10, so you know you're getting your money's worth. And as a special thank you to our listeners, we've got a promo code just for you. Use Drew Code at checkout to get $20 off your first order. That's $20 off your first purchase, whether it's for the game that you've been dying to see or that concert that everybody is talking about. Head over to SeatGeek now, find your perfect seat, and use Drew Code for $20 off your first order. SeatGeek, get your tickets to the action today. Knocks himself out, gets up, is very adamant. He does not want to be, he does not want to be, in, uh, you know, checked out for a concussion. And then as soon as the, as soon as his team gets the ball back, they do one offensive play without him. He runs out of the tent, grabs his helmet, and and goes back onto the field. And I am seriously questioning how well that concussion protocol was done or the series of tests or whatever it takes to determine whether or not a player can go back because I don't think Josh Allen does today does not have a concussion. I'm a firm believer that he does have a concussion. The Tua hit where Tua was out didn't look as bad as the hit that Josh Allen took on Sunday against the Texans that knocked him out. And it, granted, Tua's was scarier because the way that he was hit in his arms again flailed up and kind of went limp and all that stuff. That was very, very scary. Josh Allen was knocked out on the ground and then goes right back on the field like nothing happened. Something doesn't seem right. And that does not look great because granted, Josh Allen is known as being a competitor, totally understand that. But to have him kind of not follow the guidelines and I, again, I completely believe that he had a concussion and he goes back in there and I... I would bet that the NFL is going to investigate this and the bills are going to have some sort of punishment going, going because of this. And I think what's sad is the worst punishment that they're probably going to get is they're probably going to get a heavy fine and maybe a slap on the wrist in some form of like, I don't know if suspensions are going to happen maybe to the coaching staff and or whoever, but the way that this looks is like, yeah, everyone has to go through concussion protocol. Everyone is safe except for that player because he just does, he's above it all. And Josh Allen does kind of give me the sense that he is above it all in a, in a form or fashion. Like, you know, I don't need a concussion protocol. I'm good. And he runs out. And again, I'm completely saying I believe that he had a concussion. I'm not a doctor. I just think that, that he did. And I'm wondering like, truly like these player safety protocols, especially if you had a guy like Josh Allen, that's just going to run out on the field after being tested. And yet we've seen players that have had, I don't want to say less significant hits, but have been hit not nearly as tough or as hard, let's say, and yet they got pulled for a concussion and then Josh Allen's fine. No, something doesn't smell right to me. And then there was another one with Justin Fields on Sunday where he also same thing, took a heavy hit, hard hit right in the chin and it was flagged and then he got pulled, examined, and then he goes back out there and clears concussion protocol or at least the independent examination. I'm questioning that as well and that's not great. That's two NFL quarterbacks and we're all about protecting the quarterbacks and all about player safety. I don't know, man. That just seems interesting. I, I, I bet that some of these NFL players, concussions, in my opinion, it sounds like that they are going to vary. Some players are going to react to the concussion a lot more um, than other players. Other players are going to be able to maybe hide it a little bit better than other players. You know, if I had to guess, I would say that, you know, Justin Fields and Josh Allen knew how to answer the questions. That doesn't mean that they don't have a concussion. That just means that they tricked the system, so to speak. And I'm not accusing Justin Fields of tricking the system or anything like that. But I do think that Josh Allen is probably not going to is probably going to do everything he can to pass a concussion protocol, even though he probably has a concussion, whatever. So that's all I'm going to say on that. And I'm going to try to hurry this up a little bit. But that's my feelings about the about the situation with Josh Allen and the whole concussion protocol. To me, it just it seems fishy. I don't I don't know. 